In the early 1940s, while serving aboard the aircraft carrier USS Enterprise, enlisted man Charles Wheeler heard some unlikely news about a new officer. I heard about one of our new pilots who come aboard ship, and he was a Mexican boy. And I thought, I ain't believing that. Wheeler, too, had Mexican ancestry, but he'd never seen a Mexican-American pilot until he met Ensign Manuel Gonzalez from California. They soon grew close. We bonded uh, over our Mexican background, and it was like having a new friend. On the morning of December 7, 1941, the ship was at sea, two days behind schedule. It should have been safe in port at Pearl Harbor. Going into any port, we always sent a few of our aircraft in to make arrangements. So very early in the morning, they launched the dive bombers, and Ensign Gonzales happened to be in the second launching. And those are the ones that got there when, when the Japanese were, were blowing the place up. The planes from the Enterprise stumbled into the middle of the surprise attack and soon found themselves under fire from both sides. Back on the Enterprise, a startling transmission from Ensign Gonzalez broke the standard radio silence. He pleaded, don't shoot, please don't shoot, friendly aircraft. Those were the last words the man ever said. Americans lost a damn good pilot, and I lost a good friend. Ensign Manuel Gonzalez was one of the very first American casualties of World War II, one of an estimated half million Latinos who served in that war. They came from all over, the barrios in L.A., the caserios of Puerto Rico, the pueblos of New Mexico, the farms and border towns of Texas. And they fought in all the major battles across Europe and the Pacific. And like other Americans, the experience would leave them changed. In just a few years, a Mexican-American doctor from Texas would be transformed into a tireless advocate of civil rights. On the home front, a teenage girl would overcome prejudice to join the war effort, helping to build bombers and fighters. Rosita, the Riveter. And an army soldier would become the first Mexican national to earn the Congressional Medal of Honor, only to be refused service in his home state. Fighting a war overseas would transform the Latino fight for civil rights back home. When the United States entered the war after the attack on Pearl Harbor, a Mexican-American doctor completing his residency in a Nebraska hospital immediately volunteered for service. His name was Hector P. Garcia. Hector decided this was the call of the nation. He was going to respond. He went to the draft board, said, I want to go in. And he told them, I'm a doctor, a medical doctor. I'd like to be a medical officer. In addition to a medical degree, Garcia had spent several years in the Army Reserves. Rather than the military really looking at his credentials, which are really impeccable as a medical physician and college graduate, it's assumed that no Mexican can possibly have that pedigree, and he is put immediately into the infantry. Garcia treated the decision as an oversight. During training, he continued to lobby for the medical corps. Just before he shipped out for North Africa, the military reconsidered. They finally came to him and said, 
Are you sure you're a medical doctor? Where did you get your training, in Guadalajara or some school in Mexico? He said, no, I went to the University of Texas at Galveston. I uh, did my res residency in, in Omaha, Nebraska. And at first, it was very hard for them to believe that, but eventually, they accepted that. In late 1942, Garcia arrived in North Africa as the battalion surgeon for an engineering group. But this wasn't his first war. He'd been born in Tierra, Mexico, in the middle of the Mexican Revolution, a brutal conflict that took a million lives. Fleeing the violence, his family immigrated to a small South Texas town, Mercedes, where relatives owned a dry goods store. Although legally considered white, Mexicans and Mexican-Americans were segregated from Anglos who held all the power. Shootings and lynchings of Mexicans were common, especially in South Texas. One of the reasons why this transition was so traumatic for the Garcia family is that unlike many of the other families that came north, probably the preponderance, obviously, the Garcia family was very established. They were university uh, and college educated. They came into a situation really unprepared for what they were confronting. Tremendous resistance based on their national and racial identity. Though educators by profession, outside their home, Hector's parents would never teach again. Inside was a different story. Right after work, the father and the mother would sit them down at the kitchen table, and they would go over mathematics, history, um, they would read to them from the newspaper. All of their children, Hector's siblings, were educated. They all went to college. Most of them became physicians, Hector being among the first of them to achieve that. Garcia earned his medical degree from the University of Texas at Galveston. But when he sought a residency in Texas, he couldn't find a hospital that would take him and ended up at Creighton University in Nebraska. Despite the apparent discrimination, Garcia didn't perceive it as such. In the early years, Hector had a tendency to feel if you educated yourself, if you were assertive, if you were articulate, people didn't discriminate against you. That that was meant for the poor, browner Mexican-Americans. In fact, Garcia would feel his time in the military was free of prejudice. He served with distinction in North Africa, in Italy. By the war's end, he'd be promoted to captain, though that was the rank typically given medical doctors when they first entered the army. <laughs> 